Hello ladies and welcome to Real Life Cooking. This is the social media home of Real Life Women's Ministry and I'm Dr. Vanessa Allen and I'm so glad that you stopped by today. Today we're going to still be talking about our fasting journey but I want to try to see if we can mix Daniel's fast with keto and we're going to make a vegan shawarma. All right so Daniel's fast plus keto plus vegan. Let's see how it all works out. But before we feed our tummies, let us feed our spirits and our soul on the word of God. Today, we're going to be looking at Proverbs 17 and 17. And I know you know this one. Proverbs 17 and 17 says, iron sharpens iron. So one man sharpens another. Ladies, today, I just want to encourage you that as you go on your fasting journey. Now, obviously we're not to be fasting so that the world can see. Scripture talks to us about that. But you may want to grab a buddy and ask her to go along with you. Or if you're doing this with your church, make sure to tap in to whatever connections they may offer, be it small groups or weekly check-ins or however you all are communicating because iron really will sharpen iron. Trust me, your hunger will come back bold and strong and beautiful and convince you to go out and get that Whataburger. You're going to need that girlfriend to call to say, no, ma'am, we are doing this for the glory of God. We are doing this for the glory of God and we will keep our commitments. So iron sharpens iron. Grab a buddy, grab a girlfriend to take along with you on this fasting journey. All right. Now let's jump right on into this Daniel's fast, keto, vegan, shawarma. Let's see what happens. First, get your cutting board. You're gonna need a cutting board. And then you'll need a knife for chopping your vegetables. You'll need a skillet or some type of saute pan. And then you'll need a spoon to stir. A smaller skillet for the broccoli rice. Then for the tahini sauce, you'll use a measuring cup. And for the ingredients that go in the tahini sauce, you'll use whatever measuring utensils you have and a whisk to whisk them all together. Okay, now let's talk about ingredients. Now I found this recipe off of one of my apps that I have. But as you know, as I always say, I modify recipes to make it our family friendly. So it called for a plant protein crumble and they required a pea protein. We're going to be using a soy protein. Now I know that they say a lot that women shouldn't have a lot of this. So again, let me say up front, use the ingredients one that works for you medically, physically, so on and so forth, but also use the vegetables or use the ingredients that are approved through your church's fast. We can have all these things. So make modifications as you need be. So you're gonna need your crumbles. You're gonna need some boiling water, which we'll boil that in just a moment. You're gonna need some tomatoes, some paprika, sumac powder. This is new to me. I didn't know about this. So I went out and found it. Cumin, you're gonna need some cumin. And then you're gonna need some salt and black pepper. Additionally, you're gonna need some extra virgin olive oil, some vegetable broth, some mustard, a mustard of your choosing. I do not like parsley. It called for parsley, but I cut it out because I don't like parsley. And we're gonna use some tomatoes, some onions, tahini, one of my favorites, some lemon juice, and we may or may not use the mint leaves. We're just gonna taste our way through this. I'm adding to this because I feel like this recipe needs something, so I'm adding riced broccoli and some spinach. Let's put all this together and see what we come up with. So let's get started. The first thing you're gonna do is get your pan, whatever pan you're gonna use, saute pan or whatever, and you just wanna take your crumbles, put them in the pan, season them, I have found that it's easier if they are defrosted, but if not, the pan will defrost it. Turn your heat up to about a medium heat and season it with whatever you like. I will probably use a little salt and pepper, garlic powder, onion powder, and whatever else <laughs> I find in my seasoning pantry. But you can just simply use salt and pepper if you like. Cook them up real good. They just really need to be warmed. And then you're going to go from there and you're going to add to that your tomato paste, your paprika, 
You're gonna add the sumac powder, add some salt. Now this recipe called for three fourths tablespoon of salt, but I like to season to my liking. So season to your taste. Then you're going to stir this up. Make sure that it's cooked through really, really well. And then you want to drizzle a little olive oil over it. Now, here's what I would likely do. I would like to put the olive oil in first before I put the crumbles in, instead of going back with the olive oil. But this recipe called for you to put the olive oil in after the fact. I probably would not do that. Now, after you have everything all seasoned, let it cook for about three minutes. It's gonna brown just a little bit. After that, then you're going to turn your heat down to like a low or medium low, and you're going to pour in your broth. You're gonna cover your skillet and let it cook for about 10 minutes, or just until the, your liquid has pretty much evaporated. Now, you can go ahead at this point and add in your tomatoes and your onions and add them along with your mustard. Okay, so originally I think I said turn the heat down. I'm gonna turn the heat up just a little bit more, cook these down to medium. And my skillet, I'm using this cast iron skillet, is a little bit too big for me to cover. So I'm not gonna cover it. I think it'll be fine. So I'm gonna leave it on medium heat, let that cook for about 10 minutes and see what happens. I may even turn it up a little bit to medium high. Stir this in really good. And if you're like me and you're gonna add extra things, this is the point where you can add your vegetables. Like I'm going to add the spinach right about here. Stir in, let it let your spinach or whatever extra vegetables you're gonna to add to it wilt down and let it cook for another 10 minutes on low. While it is cooking, let's prepare the tahini sauce. Now, for this tahini sauce, you can make it yourself or you can buy it in the store. I bought mine in the store just for the sake of time. What you wanna to do to prepare the tahini is you're gonna take one tablespoon full of olive oil, you're gonna use your lemon juice, and then that, remember that boiling water? This is where you're gonna use it. Okay, so in looking at the recipe, I think because she used a pea protein, she used the boiling hot water for her to cook her crumbles. I didn't need that for the soy protein. So I'm gonna go ahead and add the boiling hot water here, but, but not the whole cup. I'm just gonna add what would be sort of like two tablespoons full. Add all these ingredients to a bowl and whisk until a creamy sauce forms. What we wanna do now because I'm adding in broccoli rice. We're gonna go ahead and take a different pan and we're going to cook up the broccoli rice. Same thing, season it if you like, but really I just like for the moisture to go out of it and it will fluff up just like rice. Once your broccoli rice is cooked, if that's what you choose to add to this, you can go ahead on and begin to plate it. And then you can take your shawarma, your crumbles that you have cooked and added all your other vegetables to, add that to your broccoli rice, Okay, so I'm finishing this off with some vegan sour cream. Now again, I have made many changes to this recipe. I, by no means do I believe this is a traditional shawarma. I do not. I modified it to be more vegan, keto, Daniel's Fast friendly. So I added the vegan sour cream I even added some microgreens on top. I added avocado and I added the broccoli rice to make it more of a meal. All right, ladies, this is our finished product. It was a 
amalgamation of things. Definitely a departure from the original recipe that I found. But you know, I like doing that. Make it your own. We made a Daniel's Keto Vegan Shawarma with tahini. <laughs> Definitely not traditional shawarma. But before we forget, let's go back and be reminded. We were looking at Proverbs 27, 17. And it said, iron sharpens iron, so one man sharpens another. So as you're going through your Daniel's fast and you're thinking through meals and you're being creative, just remember to um, call a girlfriend, call a sister from church or someone that is maybe on the journey along with you. And remember, we said it's not about putting more emphasis on the fasting. It's just someone helping to encourage you or even if maybe you need a little accountability to stick with your commitment to your fast. Either way, remember iron sharpens iron. You too can be iron for someone else. Encourage a sister. You have someone encourage you and you encourage them. All right, I'm Dr. Vanessa Ellen and this has been Real Life Cooking. Don't forget, don't forget to like, subscribe, follow, and hit the notification bell so you'll know when we're making more interesting things. All right, take care and see you next time.